when they don't read, they, you know, they just play games. And when they just play games, all it is, they are just kind of like human children robots. And, and this is what it is. Look, if the black community in America and or the Muslim communities around the world want to better your community, want to do better and get, get things changed, then your children need to read, yes. So the children of the black community, the children of the black community, the children of the Muslims community around the world, and children of the black community around the world need to need to educate yourself and the best way to educate yourself is reading i'm telling you you want to read books i'll tell you a story look malcolm x long uh, malcolm x uh, long story short yeah malcolm x when he was in prison and he obviously locked up in a prison cell for something like 21 hours or 22 hours, more or less. And what he did, and of course, you know, prison in America have libraries, which is a very good thing, libraries full of books. And Malcolm X, you know, read so many books when he was in prison. And when he came out, he was like a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, Allahu Akbar. He was an, he was a walking encyclopedia. You know, with reading so many books, he learned so much. I'm telling you, if someone, a child, begins to read books from the age of eight or nine and keeps reading books and makes a hobby reading books, you know, by the age they're like 21, 22, they will know more than their professors in university. I'm telling you, you can read a book in one week. You can read an average book, say about three to 400 pages in one week. All you have to do is read for 45 minutes. And you can read a book in one week, yeah, or eight days. And on average, you could read four books in a month. And again, rounding off, and in an average, you can read 50 books in a year. And if you keep reading... From the age of 10 to the age of 20, yeah, 50 books in a year, yeah, 10 years, yeah, that's, what's that? So 10 times 50, yeah, yeah, 500 books, you have, you would have read 500 books. You will be super intelligent. You know what they do with artificial intelligence, you know, these computer, these uh, deep neural networks? You ask any computer scientist and they will tell you they keep feeding the artificial intelligence data, meaning information. And the more information the uh, deep neural network, which is artificial intelligence, gets, it becomes more intelligent and super intelligent. And the brain is similar. The more you read, the more intelligent you become. The more you read, the more smart you become. And I don't see children reading. And that's the problem. I'm telling you that we as the children of Adam, the problem is we don't read. And then we like to blame others. Yeah? Yeah, well, you know, he's racist, he's racist, that guy is corrupted, she is corrupted, he is corrupted. All that, and you know, we keep if we keep doing that, we are not going to actually rise up and become a super intelligent species. We can become a super intelligent species if we encourage and persuade our children to read books. Yes, I'll say it again read books. Children need to stop playing games like Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto and FIFA. Yes, and adults, you know, football. You know, really, what are you going to get out of football? I mean, it's not going to benefit you, is it? 
read, go to your library, get some books and get reading. I'm telling you. This is, you know, you need to educate your children. So this is for, you know, all disadvantaged groups. Yeah, all disadvantaged groups. Okay, so at the moment, so all disadvantaged groups at the moment is, I'm telling you, because of lack of education. Yeah, and if you, you know, look, look at the people who are in power, that's because they're educated. I'm, t I'm sorry, they're not... Okay, yeah, maybe the colour of the skin is a factor. So, yeah, white people in power, yeah, all around the world. I mean, you know, Western countries. But but look at their education. Al Alhamdulillah, they are very educated. They understand this. You know, those... What I'm saying, you know, disadvantaged groups, whoever you are. And, of course, in the UK, there are... Um, white community disadvantaged groups again because of not reading read books and go university yeah go college and get degrees in politics in political science in philosophy in psychology yeah become writers and journalists and um honest writers and journalists become, you know, uh, um, doctors and, 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 and accountants and educated, yeah, become a professional, yeah, economists, yeah, um, socialists, um, scientists. And this is how you can solve these racism issues. Yes, it's, it's, it's lack of education. Yes, it's lack of education. If we go, if we go, say, just about you know, two hundred years ago in the UK, there was no NHS, there was no um, DWP, meaning benefit system to help the needy, the disadvantaged. There was no none of that. And yes, European, English, uh, Irish, Welsh children, especially poor uh, families. Uh, at the age of 9, 10, 11, had to go and work and do really nasty work, you know, uh, cleaning uh, uh, other people's uh, um, excrements, uh, urine, uh, cleaning the chimney and, and cleaning the streets. But then, you know, education helped. So basically some people later on said, look, we really need to help these children. It's wrong, you know, a child is working for, you know, at the age of 10. We need, you know, education. And so, and it's not like, it's not like the, um, the British government didn't have money. Oh, they had, they had money. I mean, British Empire back then, going back 200 years or 250 years, they had money. And also it was almost the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the United Kingdom. So they had money, but... They didn't understand, you know, the sum of them at the top who had money. They actually didn't know how to reinvest their money. So some people who are more educated suggested, look, we need to invest in building um, infrastructure. So less, you know, railways and, you know, make them better and roads. and But especially let's have schools and colleges or they call them polytechnics back then, you know. And basically, yes, yeah, cool. So the people who had money said, well, what are we going to get out of it? And so the people who are educated, you know, said, look, yeah, let's, uh, let's build schools yeah, with your money, investment. And then, you know, children, you know, go to school. And after, you know, 10, 12 years, 15 years of, uh, 15 years of education to come out, becoming, you know, engineers and doctors and scientists and, you know, professional, and then you give them work. Uh, and then, you know, at the same time, okay, you build uh, 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 more infrastructure, such as hospitals, and, you know, in, expand the railway system, expand the road system, transportation, all that, yeah? 
uh, ships and navy, and and then you know if you can put you know four million people uh, into work and say right now I want income tax, yeah. So just to make the maths easy, so four million people back then said they earned ten pound a week, and or, or said they earned twenty pound a week, and the tax was like one pound. Yeah, four million people, one pound. That's four million a week income tax goes back to the government or to those people who invested in in building schools. Yeah, and this is what we need to do in America in black African communities, in Muslim countries, you know, like in Bangladesh, in Pakistan. We need to, you know, the rich should invest in schools and then, you know, they become doctors and engineers and scientists and then you give them a job and again you increase the salary slowly and ask for income tax. And that's how Britain, United Kingdom, is is tax rich and has, has come a long way. And similar with the United States of America, I mean I don't want to go into the you know Columbus and you know colonialism but yeah Christopher Columbus went and you know he killed a lot of um, Native Americans but post Columbus uh, United States start building infrastructure and hospitals and uh, schools and colleges and so education is the key but I'm telling you nowadays you know reading I mean honestly you could read online you could go you can subscribe to Amazon I think it's about eight pound or nine pound a month, and you you will have access to millions and millions of books. Yeah, just get a Kindle, you know, Kindle reader, which is about only like forty pound or something like that, and you your child will have access to so much uh, books to read. So, you know, this is what we need to do. We need to tell our children to read books. And then we as a children of Adam, peace be upon Adam, can can leave this racism behind. Uh, reading also will help, you know, reduce inequality, meaning your children, your child, who, you know, because of reading, you know, easy to get a degree, finds it easy to get a degree, will get a better job. Yes, definitely. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what we need to do. And look, I tell you, look, uh, someone with a degree is always better off. And I'll give you a good example. So uh, two people working, say two people at the age of 22, the yeah, average 22. And one person has a degree, has a university degree, and the other person doesn't. But both of them begin to work, uh, say, at Asda or Tesco, yeah? Asda or Walmart. And the person with the degree will start on what's called a graduate training scheme as a junior manager on a salary between uh, you know, 18 to 25,000 pounds or dollars a year, give or take. The person without the degree will start on minimum wage, which is, I don't know, uh, £8, maybe, or £7 an hour, yeah? Now, three years later, the person with a degree will become the store manager, or four years later. The person without the degree will still be on, on minimum wage and doing shelving. Another five, six, seven years later, the person with the degree will be a senior manager, you know, more promotion, company car, you know, even probably will have some shares in Asda or Walmart. You see my point? But the person without the degree will still be shelving. That's because he will not be given more responsibility because he wouldn't know how to, you know, what to do with more responsibility. I mean, if someone does not have a degree... What it means is they, they haven't trained themselves for more responsibility. Okay? So, reading 
and then going to university, getting a degree. And also, you know, when a person does a degree, three to four years, yeah, five years, they, you know, each year they're doing assignments, they're learning, they're progressing, they're reading. And after, you know, that three, four years when they graduate, you know, they become, you know, a, a better person. Education generally should make you a better person. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that greed is a choice and we should avoid greed. Definitely, greed is a choice, jealousy is a choice, yeah, free will allows you autonomy, therefore dual nature, therefore choices, you know, positive nature factors and negative nature factors. And now, that was, you know, regards to, of course, I started with George Floyd and then education, but that's the key, the solution is is education. We, I mean, you know, protesting is all good and looting is bad. And what I'm trying to say is protesting, I mean, you know, there were, there's been so many protests in the past, you know, was the 1992 LA riots when Michael Jackson was alive uh, for similar, you know, incident incidents. This, you know, protesting will not actually change the current situation. Solution to the current situation regarding disadvantaged people all around the world, be African Americans in America, be, you know, be Africans in Africa, be, be you know, um, white people in South Afri- Africa, be uh, Muslims in all all around the world. Key education is the key. Yeah, when you tell your child to read, and they keep reading, and they keep reading, and they keep reading, and then they become politicians, and then they become policy makers, and they become good politicians. They avoid greed, then they can bring about change. Then they can change the system. To only way to change a corrupted system is to be involved and get into that system. But of course, you have to be educated to get into. Even if the system is corrupted, it's you know managed by educated people, who of course have have greedy agendas who have become corrupted. So you have to, you know, get into politics and be a good politician, you know, politics for good, and that's how you can change. And change will come, but this is how we have to do it. Now, carrying on, I would like to talk about that... um, it's a it's a different topic, and the topic is living a non-Muslim life is biologically and chemically unwise, foolish. Living a non-Muslim life is biologically and chemically unwise, foolish, and you may ask why. So when you live as a non-Muslim and you drink alcohol to your heart's content, then it destroys your liver. When you live as a non-Muslim and you take cannabis and heroin for self-indulgence, this destroys your brain, mind and soul. You see, the Creator wrote the program as such that If you do not worship the Creator Allah the way the Creator wants you to worship, which is through Islam, meaning being as a Muslim, worshipping the Creator Allah as a Muslim, Quran and Sunnah, Islam. And if you don't, you know, be grateful to the one who created you, and that is the Creator Allah, if you if you don't be grateful to Allah, 
meaning you choose and you decide to live a non-Muslim life, then you end up in a state of punishment which can and may be eternal. And it is eternal. Having said this, the Creator Allah knows best. It's like fire having pain, but the fire cannot escape the fire because it is pain itself. It's like fire having pain, but the fire cannot escape the fire because it is pain itself. Save the real you, which is your soul. The real you is your soul, not your earthly body. Therefore, save yourself from the fire of Jahannam, the punishment. Save yourself from the hellfire, not for God, but for your own sake. For your own sake. The disobedience in society is self-evident. We don't like authority. The disobedience in society is self-evident and apparent. This proves we have free will. One of the purpose of our free will is so that we have choices in life and are not robot like human but genuine human. The Creator Allah created us as genuine humans and obviously the Creator Allah did not want us to be robot-like. This is why the Creator Allah gave us free will. So it is up to us that we make the correct choice and the correct guidance and the correct guidance is Islam. Therefore the correct choice is Islam. Because Islam has deterrents such as no alcohol, no gambling, no drugs, no sex before marriage, and more. And all the things that I have just mentioned are not good for the human biological body. Too much alcohol ruins your liver. Drugs ruins your brain cells. Gambling, addiction, well, you can't pay rent. If you will, if you become addicted to gambling, then you waste all your money in gambling and you can't pay rent and eventually you become homeless. I mean, you know, more or less, generally, this is not the case for everyone. Of course, some people become homeless uh, not because of the their fault, you know. So some people become homeless because uh, of other reasons. The disobedience in society is self-evident. Yeah, so our desires should be included in regards to why the journey of life is a test and not just a life with a meaningless end. In fact, our desires are a part or a factor in regards to the journey of life being the ultimate test. This is because our desires are influenced by external aspects in the environment we live in, and our circumstances in most cases does not help. And so this is when we let the influencer into our hearts. Who is the influencer? Iblis, Satan, Shatan, the devil. And what the devil does, you see, the devil has managed to convince so many people, millions and millions of people, that he is not real. And so in doing that, the devil finds it more easier to attack those who does not believe in the devil. Now don't forget, Satan, the devil, is part of our earthly examination. 
because the Creator Allah tells us in the Quran that the devil, Shaitan, is the number one enemy to the children of Adam. Peace be upon Adam. I would like to stop there and continue hopefully tomorrow. Uh, please share my podcast, my talks to everyone. And please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. This is Soul Searching, Searching for the Truth, podcast number 12, I think.